Well, hi again. We're going to continue our discussion on electric uh, current and by talking about resistance now uh, we're going to start by uh, defining something called electron drift. What is that? Well, um, let's, we need to understand what's going on inside uh, the conductor, inside the wires of a circuit for example. So here's a, a wire and we have these uh, metal atoms, whatever metal this is, maybe copper, maybe aluminum, and that's represented uh, the, uh, by the blue, a very organized uh, structure, a solid form. And these red um, dots here are, represent the electrons. And what they're always in motion because they have their thermal energy. Uh, these atoms are vibrating, and the electrons, since they're free to move around, they tend to uh, here, here's the ions here, and the electrons are the negative ones. They tend to move around, and but they do so randomly, and there's no net movement. So they move around, but not from one side to the other necessarily. So it's just random movement, electron drift, and uh, there's, so there's no net energy flow. However, if we have the same situation and we apply a voltage where we have uh, positive on one end, negative on the other, well now the electrons uh, have an excuse to drift towards one end. And you can probably predict which end they're going to drift toward, but I'll, I'll just play the animation here. So they're still going to have the random movement, but superimposed on top of that is going to be their drift toward the, the end that they're attracted to. So they're going to end up going more toward this positive end here and away from the negative end. So, yeah. And this, the reason we want to discuss this is because these uh, random movement and collisions with the ions are the reason uh, that causes, uh, is, uh, leads to resistance in the wire and causes heating in the wire. Now, if some of you have ever, um, you know, vacuum, used a vacuum cleaner and you can go to put it away afterward and you feel the cord, the cord is warm. Not supposed to be a you know a conductor. It's supposed to be you know perfect, but it actually does have a little bit of resistance. And this is what's going on. The electrons, uh, since the motor draws so much current, the electrons are you know bumping into these ions here and creating what essentially it's analogous to a friction, and they generate some heat. Those uh, ions here dissipate that extra energy in terms of heat. Well, we have a electron drift applet here. We'll fire this up. And view it online for free. That's my favorite way. There we go. Ooh, this is much larger than what you can see. Uh, let me see if I can shrink this down a little bit. And just uh, scroll. Uh, there's no scroll either. See, I'm going to grab the uh, the video screen and move it back and forth. So here we see, you know, battery in the middle. This is a switch right here, and the wire comes down this negative terminal end, and on the other side, stand by. I'm going to move this wire this out of the way, and scroll this over. We see over here we've got the other end of the wire and the battery. So let's see what happens when I close the switch. So there, the switch is closed, and now you can see the, the electrons are flowing from the negative terminal of the battery toward the positive. And uh, the ions are, are colliding. Of course, this is not the scale. The electrons aren't that big, really. But hey, that's the way it goes. So we can uh, we can see what's going on better. Okay, this is kind of a neat applet. And we'll open the switch there. I'll minimize this and get back to our presentation. Okay, so conductors, um, let me just peek, peek ahead a second. Okay, yeah, so we're still in the, the realm of resistance here, talking about resistance. So uh, how good is a conductor? I mean, we're, when we say a conductor, it's everything can be a conductor. We saw that with the static electricity. So here we have in the middle is an insulator. There's not really any free electrons here. Semiconductors, semi means half conductor, so they have some. And you can control how much of a conductor it is by contaminating essentially the uh, material with uh, other elements to make them more or less of a conductor. And here we have more of a pure conductor. We have lots of, it's kind of a sea of free electrons, free to move. So when you're talking about a conductor, you really want to ask how many free electrons are there. 
So a resistor, let's talk about resistance. Resistance is, as the name suggests, it's a resistance to current flow. And the water circuit analog analogy would be um, the resistance, electrical resistance, would be analogous to perhaps a paddle wheel, the, the device that is doing the work. Okay, now what determines the resistivity is the actual material. Here's a device that's called the resistor, and it has these metal uh, terminals on each end. And in the middle, they have this mixture, some mixture of uh, insulator or conductor. So the percentage of the mixture determines how good of a conductor it is, it determines the conductivity. Or the inverse of that would be something called the resistivity. The unit of resistance is the ohm, named after uh, Georg Ohm, the fellow who uh, first came up with uh, the law that's named after him, the relationship between uh, current and voltage and resistance. And the symbol used is a capital omega, indicate an ohm. I know that might be confusing. Sorry about that. That's the way that goes. Example resistances of uh, uh, a kilometer of thin copper wire would have about 20 ohms of resistance. So that's a long, long uh, wire, a very good conductor have some measurable resistance there. A lamp filament, if you break open a bulb, that tungsten filament would have a resistance of about 200 ohms. Human body would be about 2 mega or 2 million ohms. Now so what factors actually affect the resistance of material? Well, uh, the length of the uh, particular device, the cross-sectional area. You can think of this as the length being in terms of uh, traffic is a, is a good analogy. So uh, the longer of a tube you have, um, or maybe a garden hose would be a good example. The longer of a garden hose you have, the more resistance to flow there is. Uh, the area, this might be, uh, if you have a, a larger diameter hose or pipe, well then more water can flow through it. Likewise, on the traffic, you have uh, many lanes of uh, traffic, uh, then more cars can, uh, can flow. And of course, the, the material, I mean, how good of a conductor it is. And there's an equation we can use to define that. So the resistance here is, um, this material is, uh, the symbol used for that is this Greek letter rho. That's the, uh, the resistivity. And it's, uh, times the length divided by the area. So let me go back one here a second. So as the resistivity go, um, goes up, the resistance goes up, and as the length goes up, resistivity goes up, and as the area goes up, the resisti resistivity goes down. And here's a, an applet here. Um, we'll run that in a second. Uh, I just need to say that the, the resistance of a material is also uh, temperature dependent. Uh, but it, whether it increases or decreases, it does depend on the material. There are both types. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, so the example of the resistance of uh, tungsten, the filament of your bulb, your common incandescent bulb, that does increase with temperature. So as it gets hotter, the resistance goes up, and therefore the current would go down. That's why you often, when the bulbs burn out, you see them when you f uh, burn out when you first turn the bulb on. That's when it's the coolest, so the resistance is the least. And, it gets really bright there for a brief period and then it's completely dead. Okay, so mini quiz here. Can you figure out the units of resistivity based on this here? You know this has to be ohms. You have length and area. I'll give you a second. You can pause your video because I'm going to give you the answer in just a few seconds. So pause your video. And the answer is... Um, oh, I didn't say it, so I'll just have to tell you. <laughs> it's uh, ohm meters. So not ohms per meter, but ohm meters, or ohms times meters. Uh, and I promised you I'd play this uh, applet here. And I guess there's no way to shrink that, I don't think. Yeah, oh, yeah, there is. So we can shrink that. Let me. There we go. We can see all of it now. So um, this is a neat little applet. So if you increase resistivity, R gets bigger. And if you decrease the resistivity, R gets smaller. Uh, so more resistive materials, well, more resistance. As the length increases, then resistance increases. And as the area increases, well, fatter wire, larger diameter wire, then the resistance should go down. Indeed it does. Thinner wire can't carry as much current. So it has more resistance. So we generally want uh, as large diameter wire as you can, but you know that's heavier and more expensive. So there's a balance usually. 
And back to our presentation. I think that's it. Yep, so this is going to end the uh, discussion on resistance. We'll see you.